Hey guys, Jim here with another video for you. This is 50 Years in Film, 1992. But before we begin, at the end of this video, if you like what you see, please give me a like, a subscribe, and most importantly, please leave comments below. Let me know how you feel about the films of this year, what kind of, what films you have that I don't have, and such. So, uh, before we get on with the normal uh, caveats, like we always do, I want to do something a little different today. I want to throw out some shout outs to tens, 10 of my subscribers. Five of them have channels of their own. The other five do not as far as I know, but all 10 of these guys and or women, I'm not really sure. Uh, they're just wonderful. They, they watch everything. They subscribe. They leave shout outs for me on their channels. They're just wonderful people. So in no particular order, I first want to mention Dan at Mr. Dan in Horror. Uh, Eddie at Movie Collector 623. And three of my friends over in the UK. Stuart at Stuart George's Home Movies. Matt at Matt V's Movies. And Carlos at Eastward, I'm sorry, Eastwood 4 Life Fan. And 4 is in the number 4. So those five guys, every one of them are just great. You should really check their channels out. Show them some love. Show them the kind of love that you guys have been showing me. The other five are super subscribers, as I call them. They basically are very loyal. They leave comments. They get into some great conversations with me. So again, in no particular order, I want to send out shout outs to Rudra Rock, Alex Wilson, Ball5884, Gary Robinson 8665 and Ranger Sly. And if you enjoy this 50 years in film, you can thank Ranger Sly because he was the first subscriber who suggested that I continue with this series after the very first video. So again, thank you Ranger Sly very much as well as the rest of you gentlemen for all of your support. I really appreciate it. Okay, now we're going to get on with the show. The normal caveats. I do not own every movie from 1992. Far from it. These are simply the films that I own on Blu-ray. No other physical media will be included. The other caveat is that these are simply a recap of the films, some of the films that came out that year. This is not a countdown in any way, shape, or form. This is simply just a recap. So we're going to go ahead and start. 1992 sucks. I'm sorry, it does. I've got 18, 19 titles here. And out of the almost 20 titles, I like just about all these movies to one degree or another. But there's only three or four that I would consider great movies. So we're going to start right away. We're going to go with the comedy. And the first one is Death Becomes Her. Directed by Robert Zemeckis. Starring Meryl Streep, Goldie Hawn, Bruce Willis, and Isabella Rossellini. This was originally supposed to be a Tales from the Crypt movie. And the, the cast was having such a good time and the effects were turning out so well that they just decided to release it as Death Becomes Her. You could feel the Tales from the Crypt influences in this movie. And Robert Zemeckis was one of the hands-on executive producers for the original show. So... It totally makes sense that this movie would have been Tales from the Crypt. But either way, this is a very good movie. Next, we have two underwhelming efforts from two of my favorite directors. First, from John Carpenter, Memoirs of an Invisible Man. Starring Chevy Chase, Daryl Hannah, and the great Sam Neill. The best thing about this movie is Sam Neill and the special effects. The effects actually still hold up, believe it or not. But this movie is definitely not a typical uh, Carpen or John Carpenter film. This, from all accounts, was a mess during production. Chevy Chase had a reputation of being a diva about this time. And yeah, this movie is uneven. Uh, I don't hate it, but it's definitely not even close to being prime Carpenter. Continuing that vein, but now we're going into the dramas. From Brian De Palma, 
another one of my favorite directors, Raising Cain. Not one of my favorite Brian De Palma films. That's the original one sheet. Starring John Lithgow, Lolita, David Lolita Davidovich, Francis Sternhagen, and Stephen Bauer. Again, I don't hate this movie, but I definitely don't like it that much. Although John Lithgow is incredible as always. He plays a man with a bunch of different personalities, and he's very effective in this movie. But the movie itself, not so much. Now we're going to continue the dramas, and we're going to go to a World War II drama, A Midnight Clear. Starring Peter Berg, Kevin Dillon, Ari Gross, Ethan Hawke, Gary Sinise. You can see the names there. Directed by Keith Gordon, who starred in Christine, Dressed to Kill, and Back to School, and is now a director. This is a very, very solid movie. It's, again, it's not great, but it's very good. The performances are wonderful across the board. This is based on a true story. It's not your typical war movie where it's just a lot of battles going on. No, this is a movie about something. And yes, there are some very intense moments, but this is not your typical World War II drama. If you've never heard of this movie, check it out. I'll probably include this on one of my five, un, uh, five forgotten underrated films soon. But the best drama that year is Unforgiven. Starring Clint Eastwood, Morgan Freeman, Richard Harris, and in his Academy Award winning performance as, uh, as Best Supporting Actor, Gene Hackman. This movie won Best Picture, and it also won Best Director for Clint Eastwood. Unforgiven's a masterpiece. It's one of the best Westerns ever. And again, it's not your typical Western. It's about something. It's about regret. It's about living with your past. And my God, Unforgiven is such a great movie. Definitely the best movie of the year. Okay, next, we're back to Batman. And we're with Tim Burton's second Batman feature and final, Batman Returns. Starring Michael Keaton as Batman, Danny DeVito as the Penguin, and Michelle Pfeiffer as Catwoman. This is actually my favorite Batman movies from that era, okay? They, they don't hold a candle to the Christopher Nolan movies, in my opinion. But out of all of the original four Batman movies, this one's actually the most entertaining in my eyes. Mainly because of these two. Danny DeVito is unbelievably creepy in this movie, and Michelle Pfeiffer is incredible as Catwoman. She's still my favorite incarnation of Catwoman ever. Again, I like this movie a lot. I don't love it. Now we're going to keep that sequel train going. Moving into the action with Lethal Weapon 3. Directed by Richard Donner, starring Mel Gibson, Danny Glover, and Joe Pesci. Like so many of these movies, I like this movie. I don't love it. The first two Lethal Weapon movies are fantastic. Those are four star out of four, four out of four star films. This one, to me, is like a two and a half, maybe three. Very underwhelming. Joe Pesci starts getting really annoying in this movie. Next, we have another sequel. For my Jack Ryan collection. Oop, where is it? <laughs> Patriot Games. <laughs> Sorry. Starring Harrison Ford, Samuel L. Jackson, and Sean Bean. I like Patriot Games. Again, I don't love it but I do like it. It's a solid movie. This movie's cheesy as hell, but I do love it. Under Siege. Starring Steven Seagal. Tommy Lee Jones. And say it with me. Crazy Gary Busey. I love this movie. This is the only... Steven Seagal movie I own. 
It's the only one I will ever own because personally, I can't stand him. I think he's a horrible actor. I think he's a boring martial, martial artist. However, this movie is so much fun. It's directed by Andrew Davis, who also directed The Fugitive. Tommy Lee Jones and Crazy Gary Busey are phenomenal in this movie. I love Under Siege. Next, from Walter Hill, Trespass. Starring Bill Paxson, William Sadler, Ice-T, and Ice Cube. Again, solid movie. It's not going to win any awards, but it is entertaining. And Bill Paxson and Bill Sadler play off each other extremely well, as does Ice-T and Ice Cube. Again, this movie is not anywhere near the top of the the films from uh, Walter Hill. But you could do a lot worse than watching Trespass. It is a very entertaining movie. But after Unforgiven, this is the second great movie from that year. And it was the introduction to Quentin Tarantino. Reservoir Dogs. Written and directed by Quentin Tarantino. Starring Harvey, Harvey Keitel, Tim Roth, Steve Buscemi, and in an iconic, iconic performance as Mr. Blonde, Michael Madsen. As I said, this was the introduction to Quentin Tarantino. This was his movie debut. And this was also one of the first uh, independent films that kind of crossed over into the mainstream. Now, this movie did not make a lot of money. It had a very, very limited release originally. It only made a couple of million, okay? But what it did was it served notice to Hollywood of this new voice. And in a couple of years, he would release a second movie that more or less changed cinema for the next 10 years. You all know which movie that is. We'll get there in 94. But as it is, Reservoir Dogs is a hell of a debut. And I guarantee anybody who ever loved the song Stuck in the Middle with You before this movie, now every time they hear it, they can't help but think of this movie. That scene has become so iconic. It's been satirized over the years. Reservoir Dogs is great. Now we're moving into the genre section, sci-fi. And for my Alien Quadrilogy... We're talking about Alien 3. Directed by David Fincher. This was his movie debut. Starring Sigourney Weaver and Charles Dance. Alien 3 gets a lot of shit. People talk, especially when it first came out, that it was like the worst movie ever. And I've always liked it. I don't like it as much as the first two movies, obviously. But I do like it. And I used to have the uh, Alien uh, Quadrilogy Anthology on DVD. And all of the movies had a separate disc filled with bonus features, documentaries and behind the scenes and such. And I still have that, mainly for those documentaries. But there is so much backstory on Alien 3. If you ever get a chance, check it out. David Fincher got screwed, okay? But because he was a young director who was only into music videos at that point, he didn't have any pull. And Sigourney Weaver championed them, but nobody at the none of nobody at Fox did, and they kind of took the movie away from them. But I like Alien Three. I don't love it like so many of these other movies, but I do enjoy it. Okay, now we got three loosely based Stephen King titles. First. The Lawnmower Man, directed by Brett Leonard, starring Pierce Brosnan and Jeff Fahey. I included this one on my Guilty Pleasure video. This is a bad movie. It has not aged well. I still love it. I don't know why. I do. I'm sorry. <laughs> then we have... Sleepwalkers, directed by Mick Garris, written by Stephen King, and this was an original screenplay, 
not based on any of his previous material, and starring Brian Krause, Madchen Amick, and in a wonderful performance, Alice Krieg. Alice Krieg is great in everything she's in. And she's the best thing about this movie as well. This movie's goofy. It's kind of skeezy. It's got incestuous overtones. It's got some great cameos from uh, from uh, Mark Hamill, Clive Barker, John Landis, among others. Uh, blink and you'll miss them. But again, I like this movie. I don't love it. This movie... I absolutely hate. This movie's a piece of shit. Pet Cemetery 2. Directed by Mary Lambert, who also directed the original. Starring Ed Eddie Furlong, Anthony Edwards, and Clancy Brown. Clancy Brown is the only reason to watch this movie. He's great. He is unhinged as, as, as all get out in this movie. But this movie's a mess. It has nothing to do with the original other than the location it's just a cash grab then I told you this year sucks we've got Waxwork 2 Lost in Time directed by Anthony Hickox starring Zach Galligan Alexander Gudnov and I don't even remember anybody else in this movie this movie's a piece of shit I barely got through this the less said about it, the better. And then, for my Scarlet Box set, Hellraiser 3, Hell on Earth. This was the concluding trap chapter in the original Hellraiser uh, trilogy before they uh, did one more theatrical one and then started doing a bunch of direct-to-video sequels. And quite honestly, I've never watched any of them. I like this movie. I don't love it, just like everything else in this year, for the most part, with the exception of a couple titles. I told you, this year is not good. But I saved this one for last, and this movie is great. Candyman, directed by Barnard L Rose, starring Virginia Madsen, and the incredible Tony Todd as Candyman. This was written on a short story, or based on a short story written by uh, Clive Barker. This movie's great. It's a slow burn. It's not overly gory, although there are a few very graphic scenes. But like the best of Clive Barker's work, it invokes dread. And Tony Todd is phenomenal in this movie. He instantly became a horror icon. <clears throat> It's a very simple story. Say his name five times in the mirror, he'll come for you. Just like when I was a little kid, there was a variation of this story, but we called it Bloody Mary. I love Candyman. It's a great movie. I don't like any of the sequels, and I have not seen the remake, so I couldn't tell you about those. But the original is a great movie, and it's the last film from 1992. One quick note, there is one more film that I do have in my collection, but it has not arrived yet, and that is Bram Stoker's Dracula, directed by Francis Ford Coppola, and starring Anthony Hopkins, Gary Oldman, and unfortunately, Winona Ryder and Keanu Reeves. I love those two, but they're terrible in that movie. <laughs> that movie will be included in the top 10 of the year because it's one of the few bright spots from this year. But if you stuck around this long, I hope you enjoyed it. Next year is better. However, there's a worse year coming, and it's coming soon. So with that little tidbit, I will bid you a good night, a good, eve or a good morning, good afternoon, whatever time it is where you are. And again, if you like this, please give me a thumbs up, give me a subscribe, and most important, leave those comments. And also, thank you to all of my subscribers, including the 10 that I mentioned earlier. In the first five, please go seek those channels out. Give those guys some love. Till the next time, guys, have a great one.